going on guys? Welcome to today's video. I want to thank you guys for taking the time out of your day to watch this. So you guys have seen these guys before on the channel and we're just going to go ahead and introduce you guys all again. If you guys are new to the channel, please subscribe. So here it is. I'm Jacob, the strongest of the group. I'm Justin. This is Sadie. Say hi Sadie. And you guys know this is my channel right here, but I'll introduce you guys to you guys brand new. My name is Randy, and we're all firefighters down at Peterson Air Force Base, and we're here to answer some of you guys' questions, and I thought it would be better instead of just one opinion, which would be mine. What about three? Like, you get three solid answers. So, we're about to go ahead and start the Q&A. All right, so the first question is going to be, what's your typical call volume in a shift as a DOD firefighter? So you guys can put on this. Do you want to start? Go for it. You guys can start it off. All right, so it really depends what base you're at and the time of season. Um, at Peterson, I've had eight calls in one day. I've also had zero calls in three weeks. So it really just depends where you're at and what base you're on. When I was in North Dakota Grand Forks, we had like four calls a month. It's pretty slow there, but if you go places like Shaw or overseas, you can end up getting a lot more calls, especially on deployment as well. Yeah, well, you want to talk about the deployment? Maybe how many calls you guys get there? Just some of you guys are probably curious to know that. So my first deployment was an IED cutter, and we got probably like four or five calls a day. A lot of in-flights as well. And then my second was in Jordan, Sea City. We got uh, probably like three in-flights a week. It was pretty slow there, but I had a lot of fun in Jordan. That was the best deployment ever. Uh, the next person wants to know, can you talk about DOD tech school? So I'll probably... A guy who came out of there the freshest and I'm the newest to the shift. So, um, what I can remember of it, I went there about close to a, a year ago exactly, and um, it was actually really fun. It reminds me a lot of like college. Like I've never got to live the college life. It's like, like that home. now, but it wasn't like that yeah. before. <laughs> I, mean, I thought it was like a college city. You know, I see my friends on Snapchat, social media, and you know, like they're just hanging out with their friends. They all live right together, right? That's how exactly how I felt when I was in tech school. Like I have all my friends around me. You're literally just walking around. Everything's so convenient. You walk to the gym. You walk to school. You walk to go buy something to eat. Everything is literally right there. So as far as the aspect of tech school, the living wise, I thought it was cool. You guys want to talk about like training, how that was? I barely even remember it to be honest. <laughs> I just remember the training was the hardest thing I've ever done in my entire life. With some of the training. It's not that hard. It's not that hard, but <laughs> also he played football in high school. No, football and baseball. Just football. Football, just JRTC. So for me, it was kind of difficult. If you're planning to do firefighting in the Air Force, I would highly recommend you start working out yeah, definitely. at least eight months prior to thinking about joining. Yeah, for, that's definite because like a lot of people there got kicked out because yeah. they couldn't handle like the physical part of trying to be a firefighter, not including being at tech school. Whenever you're not at school, you still gotta do PT, yeah. run, work out, and all that stuff. So that's just more on top of what you already got to do at school that's already physically demanding. So just something to think about if you guys are wanting to be a firefighter. And the tech school is also a lot easier nowadays, but if you're not actually physically fit, once you get to your first base, you'll end up getting exposed. Yep. Like, it will start showing that. Yes, that is why I actually never worked out before I got to my first base. I started working out when I got here. And he's been helping me a lot recently, and so is Hell yeah. Randy. We all, honestly, we all kind of push each other to be, yeah. become better, honestly. Like, as cliche as it sounds, like, that's literally what it is. Your family at the fire department. Yeah, that's how it is pretty much every base. Everyone's pushing each other. Yeah, so the next question is going to be, how is it working as a firefighter in the Air Force? What, would this job be beneficial in the civilian world? Best job in the Air Force, and it always carries over to the civilian world. Yep. yep. Pretty much the best thing you can do, in my advice, is doing your four years and trying to find a DOD civilian job exactly. on an Air Force base or even an Army base. So that's probably what I'm going to look at trying to do after my four years here. Yeah, the cool thing with the Air Force and stuff, they actually, I, like, correct me if I'm wrong, 90% of the jobs, like, you actually get certifications that you can carry on to civilian, like, no matter what job you do. And the cool thing about the fire department, like, your certs kind of go with you, but some, some fire departments, civilian-wise, won't accept them, correct? Yes. Yeah, you have to go through their fire academy and this and that, but 
you do get a lot of certs that you can take over, possibly EMT, stuff like that. So always keep that in mind. You can transfer your certs over to Cerulean. And that'd be very beneficial to find a side job. <clears throat> One of the, another question I got, every time you want to record while at work, do you have to do you have to ask every time you want to or do you just record whenever you go in? So pretty cool thing is one of my tech sergeants who's with me on shift, um, he, he's actually a huge friend of the channel. Like he's yes, always he just kind of like, hey, when's the next video coming out? Uh, his name's Tech Sergeant um, Mark Knickerbocker and he's actually super, super cool and super supportive. So like I, I love the, like, honestly, kind of like the motivation that pushed me to keep going forward with my channel. And um, I really asked him one time and he's not really the head in charge of shift, but he's one of the head in charge of the shift. So, I mean, if, I felt like he was very supportive of it. So anytime I bring my camera in, I feel like I'm very welcome. All the guys on shift and um, they all know I, I have the channel and stuff. So everyone's really supportive. They're always like, hey, when can you give me a shout out? When can I come out? And I was like, guys, just let me know and I'll bring the camera through. And um, I honestly like, there's like certain things you can vlog and there's certain things you can't. So I kind of refrain from showing the things that I can because, you know, obviously. Um, but other than that, I really don't ask. I just kind of do it. and know my extent of what I can and can't record and try not to have it too much. I'm not gonna take you to work every single day because now it'll affect your you know your work. Right. So you see like here and there, maybe on the weekends, that's why every time I show a firefighting video it's a little slow, we're hardly getting calls. And that's not every day. I usually take it on the weekends because there's not much to do. So that's why I initially take it. This question is gonna be for all of us. It's it's asking was this base that you chose right now that we're at Peterson, was this one of your top bases that you chose on your dream sheet? Or how does that work? How does it work to get your dream sheet base? So the dream sheet is called the dream sheet for a reason. Yeah. Literally the only bases that I put on, on my dream sheet in basic were the, well, three bases in Japan. That's literally the only thing I put down. And somehow I get Colorado. Yeah, it's just how it works. It it really well, depends. It's kind of where the Air Force needs you. Yeah. yeah, wherever you're needed, that's where you're going. See, but well, you kind of have a say once you're in for a little while. Yeah. When, yes. I was, yes. when I was in a BMC, I put all Southern bases and East Coast bases, and I got Grand Force, North Dakota, like negative 40 degrees <laughs> in the winter. It's pretty terrible. But then uh, after being in for four years, I got a BOP, which means I get an option, like to kind of say where I want to go. So I get a list of six, eight bases that I put on. And they'll try and give you that base so that you'll re-enlist. And I put Pierce as my number one, I ended up getting it. I got lucky and unlucky at the same time. Yeah. I'm lucky. <laughs> oh yeah. So on my dream sheet, I picked a lot of overseas. I, um, I didn't get that choice, obviously. Peterson was actually like my eighth pick on stateside. I had like a bunch of Florida bases in California because you know, I want to be like near the beach, stuff like that, but it didn't happen. It kind of worked at Peterson. And I'm kind of glad I, I got here because I wouldn't know the guys that I work with now. Oh yeah, you'll make great friends. Hey, yes. Where you go in the Air Force? Knowing him for five months, best friend. Yep. I have many best friends all over. <laughs> oh yeah. It is, it is what it is. Yeah. It's awesome. So I got another question right here and um, I personally don't know about this question. Maybe you do because you've been in longer than us. But it says, do you know anything about the TACP career field? The TACP? Um, that is actually what I wanted to do. TACP, uh, I'm pretty sure it's a tactical air control party. That is exactly what I wanted to do when I was in high school. Me and my best friend wanted to do it. Um, I met a TACP. He was in my FTAC. The, that's your class that you're going to go to when you first arrive to your first base and you're considered a battlefield airman you're going out with marine groups navy seal groups army groups and you're basically the one that calls in the airstrikes and stuff like that that's essentially what TACP means uh, very grueling very grueling um, Career field. Aren't they considered, um, damn, what's that? What's that? I forgot. It's Battlefield Airmen? Airman. Battlefield Airmen. Yeah. Yeah. Yeah, yeah. yeah. yeah it's, it's Special Forces, I actually was thinking about cross training in Special Forces because I kind of want to make it feel like I was actually doing something. <laughs> but, yeah. I mean, we are as firefighters, but I kind of wanted to see more. Yeah. But uh, they deploy a lot. 
they travel a lot and being that I just got married, I don't know if I want to be moving around that much just yet, so I like my job right now as a firefighter. We also have one of the best schedules in, the, in deployed locations. Yeah. So um, this other guy asked, going back to tech school, he's asking, what is one of the physical, I guess he said, what is one of the physical tests you do during tech school? Uh, one of the hardest, hose advancements, can be pretty tough. Dude. It's pretty much just hauling, moving hose throughout a house. And then uh, 300 foot. Drags and carries, I'm not sure if they still have that though. Yes, yes they do. And, uh, yeah, 300 foot hose pull. 300 horses. It's carrying out of a five inch hose, mm. 300 feet. With full it, gear, connecting it to a hydrant as well. Yes. Turning on the hydrant. I've seen a few people fall during that. And it's quite rare. You're, you're, so. liter you're literally like this. Yeah, like, you you will be at, down and you're you'll, still pulling. Yeah, you'll be deeper than a 45 degree angle at that point. And and it like it is moving. very hard. Yeah, very exactly difficult. what he said. I can I can't explain it any better. He said you don't feel like you're moving at all, and yeah. it doesn't it doesn't feel like you're going anywhere. But it's like inch by inch by yeah, inch. You yeah, it. you'll you'll run about 150 feet. Probably not feel a thing, and then bam, and just then and it just hits you. It's like hitting a wall. You're just like, oh my goodness, and man, this is extremely hard because you you also have your full pack on. You don't have a mask, but you also have your helmet on, and that's about 70 pounds yeah. on top of the 50 foot of five inch that you have on you. So you have about around 95 to 100 pounds on you extra. I see, I see some badass females do it though. Yeah, yeah. hell yeah. Also, but probably another thing too that can they weren't difficult, but I say like it's something to look forward to is uh, confined space. It's literally pitch black, trying to find your way through a super tight spot. You go in like this, you're yeah. gonna damn near get out like that because you're not moving in there. Yeah, yeah you guys, you guys go like this to get through. Yeah, it's it. It's it, pitch black in there too, so it's it, pretty interesting. Yeah, that's I'll say the least. Yeah, another physical one too that I would have to say is probably C-130 Search and Rescue. Ooh, yeah. totally forgot about this C-130. That one's, that one's yeah, three that dummies one's, getting out of there. Yeah. Three 185 pound dummies, one out of the cockpit if I'm not mistaken, and then two back yeah. in, the, in the fuselage area of the aircraft. Which is, it's pretty cool, but yeah, it's, it's a little taxing if you're not physically, like I, we recommend you going in there physically fit. Like, it's pretty, start working out. Yeah, <laughs> yeah. It'll, it'll literally come in, come in handy. Or just find the strongest guy in the group and pair up with him. That's exactly what I Dude, did. Hell yeah. That is exactly hell what yeah. I did. I was like, man, I'm gonna have a lot of Drives trouble. And carries and Pops, stuff. come here. <laughs> yeah. That was the guy in my class that was the strongest, other than the uh, the Navy guy that was 280. Biggest you, dude I've ever met. My instructor made me take one of the Marines to the gym. Believe it or not. Yeah. <laughs> <laughs> So another question we got here is, what's a good base to request? And that's kind of on a like base, correct? Shaw. If you want call volume, Shaw. I say, and if you're going to fire, honestly, it really depends where you're from. Yeah, where I would, you would like to see. How about, how about you say your personal, your personal favorite, or what would you want to go, and then his, and then mine. So I've always been a fan of Japan. I really want to go to Japan. Uh, Japan. I love the culture. I love the food, and it just sounds like a phenomenal place. Uh, never would I thought would I go to Colorado. Being from Texas, Dallas area, uh, never would have thought I would love Colorado more than Texas. So you never know what you like unless you've traveled before. Unlike me, I never traveled before. So if you're used to flat areas, I would highly recommend going to a place that has mountainous regions because it's gorgeous here. Yeah, it is. Probably the most gorgeous place I've ever been to. It definitely is. What about you? Yeah, I'm from Ohio originally and I lived there my whole life. And then going to North Dakota, it's flat forever. There's no trees, nothing. It's just terrible. And uh, so finally coming here, I love it. I love the mountains and stuff. So, recommendation for me. Probably be Charleston because I've always wanted to live out there anyway. But many people in the Air Force they always say go overseas, go overseas. Yeah. And once you get overseas, you never want to leave overseas. And personally, me, I like America. Like I like <laughs> the point, but I like staying. I like. I feel like I miss the little things, you know. Like, yeah. And I'm talking about Chipotle. Oh God. Things. 
Man, I would not be able to live without Chipotle. <laughs> yeah, so... I, and it, it's the people that make the base, for yeah, the most part. Sure, yeah. The people are so. 90% of the base. If you don't like the people, you're really not going to have a fun time. Get out and get to know people, too. Yes. The Grand Forks, I knew everybody from the gym. Everybody. I was like, I, I enjoyed going to the gym just to see all my friends, everyone I knew. Here... I don't really go to the base gym that often, so I don't know many people at this base. I just know the fire guys, and we're all close and stuff, but it's nice knowing a lot of people. Getting in with other, like, departments and stuff, and being able to get help out with finance and stuff like that. Yeah, yeah so I think, personally, I don't know why, but I, I really like Texas, so I think my, <laughs> my personal favorite would probably be Randolph Air Force Base in San Antonio. I've been there before, and I probably wouldn't want any other base in uh, Texas just because like they're literally in the middle of nowhere like San Angelo like that's inc- there's Dias. nothing out there Dias and Abilene hell no like <laughs> there's literally nothing out there so I think I picked San Antonio because San Antonio is absolutely massive and I have a lot of friends going to college so I would see a bunch of familiar faces be very close to family and I, I a lot of people tell me like just whenever you're in the service like try to go out to places where you're unfamiliar with you know like you'll have, always have your family there to come back to. And that's kind of true, and that's kind of bringing me to the point I wanted to go overseas, but if I could choose a stateside base, I'd honestly pick Randolph in San Antonio. So uh, another question we got is, what score do you need to be a firefighter? I'm guessing you mean to the ASVAB, what score do you need in there? Pretty sure it's a 45. 45? Yeah, I think so. I, I swear I thought it was a 38. They might. I think it literally, because some recruiters won't yes. let you go like my recruiter personally, she's like, if you score under 50 on the ASVAB, there's literally no point in trying to like, yeah, same help you out. So, yeah, like, yeah, but she's still like, she if you were yeah. scored under a 50, she's like, and, yeah, I'm not gonna work with you. In certain like, regions oh. where they get very high volume, yeah. so recruiters, my recruiter had uh, four people he had to recruit a month that to get into his debt program, which apparently is a high, high, very high volume in certain other regions as well um he told me if i get under a 60 that he's not even going to talk to you me you got above 60 yeah you're smart dude whatever uh he it? told me that i needed a yeah i, I got a 70 i got a 72 uh but my recruiter told me that i needed a a 45 to get fire because that was one of my options obviously when i went to meds for Air and Force in general, I'm pretty sure you just need a 32. Yeah, yeah. But 32 for- just to pass. In certain regions, if you get below uh, a certain score, your recruiter will say, "Here, study this." He'll give you a ASVAB for dummies thing, yeah. uh, study sheet, and they'll you go on from there if you don't pass. For Army, I'm pretty sure if you just know how to talk. <laughs> I'm pretty sure yeah. you have to go like 24 <laughs> or something like that. Yeah, it's, it's 24. <laughs> so one of the, one another question we got is, do you guys just get calls on base? No. Negative. No. We always Edibles. we always pray for a call off base because it actually might be a fire. Yeah, it actually might be a damn fire. Well, no, another one of your guys' questions would be our uh, call volume for fires. And personally, Very for me, small. I've been in for four years and I've only had two fires in my whole career. We don't get that many fires. We're kind of like glorified maids, to be honest. Pretty much. Yeah. Janitors and... Sometimes we run medicals, but we literally yeah. don't do anything because we don't have ENT. Yeah. But it's still a rewarding <laughs> job. Yeah. Yeah. So. Um, last year, um, no, not last year, two years ago, we had 20 fires off base. Whether we were first on scene, second, or third on scene, we were still, we still had 20 fires, which is a phenomenally huge fire rate. Um, the year before, uh, last year and this year, we've had damn years. I'm three, two, like maybe three, because I've had a, I've had a couple. I've had two, two or three fast. Fastes. I've had two or three grass fires, yeah. and that's about it. Yeah, actual grass fire. Um, other than that, like I said, it all depends. It all depends on how your base is. So this guy actually has like a little a little story to go along with this question. So he's putting, hey Randy, thanks for doing what you do. Now I'm planning to be a firefighter in the Air Force. Two questions I have for you are, I'm kind of skinny, 135 pounds. Should I work out a little bit and then join or just join ASAP because I'm 26 years old? Join. 
should he join ASAP or should he work out? He's trying to be a firefighter. I say he tries to work out first, you know, get that little physical. So he will get physical and, and be a team. Yeah, so we'll, okay. Yeah. I've had three strength days in BMT. Okay, so what I'll tell you right now, if you're 26, 135, if you're trying to get a fire job, go to go and talk to your recruiter as soon as you can. The day you go talk to your recruiter, get a gym membership. What do you say? And do you think he should work out before he joins the Air Force? The very same I think he'll day. be all right because he's probably, I think you'll you'll be fine. He's probably stronger than a lot of people in our five hundred right now. I can so. promise you, you're a lot stronger than you think you are. Um, it's it's all mental. I'll promise you that. Yeah, there he is. All but yeah, the day that you go in to your recruiter. I would highly recommend that you get a gym membership either that day or that week. And to be honest with you, I was like 140, 145 when I joined. Yeah, same and here. I gained about 40 pounds in my first two years. I've gained 20 in the two, this year, two and a half. This year, I'm just in the fire department. They'll get you working Yeah, out. two They'll and a half work. years, I've gained 20 pounds. He wants to know, these guys like, I'm really interested um, in the firefighting career field in the Air Force. He wants to know what sets the firefighting career apart from, in the Air Force apart from the other branches that fire. Like the from Navy the other fire, branches? So Navy, Army. when you're on a boat, oh, uh, I say boat, when you're on the ship, uh, they're all considered firemen. But like the, you know, like, they all have firefighters, sir. I'm pretty sure they yeah. all have firefighters. We're one. taking care of yeah, way better. Yeah. Um, Army, they're actually kind of phasing it out right now, yeah, but I'm pretty sure the all, their main purpose is crash, along with Marines. Yeah, the, those two branches are- Air Force is the out. actual fire. firefighter. Like where you would actually fight and, fire. Yeah, right? if you, you would do more civilian firefighter stuff with the Air Force rather than any other branch. Yeah, so like we have ARF, we have, we can get possibility of doing, getting a red card for wildland fire. Yeah, we do structural. Hazmat. Hazmat. Rescue. Damn, there you go, just Medical. on and on. Yeah, like, so. You, you literally do so many things Also, the Air Force. Yeah, and also the difference between uh, a civilian firefighter and an Air Force firefighter. A civilian, you will be very job specific. If you're at say one station, station one in your in your main place, in your main city, you would either be medical, structural, rescue, or hazmat. That will be your main thing. Uh, as an Air Force firefighter, you can do everything. Hey, we got an airman of the world right here. Yeah. Airman, <laughs> airman of the year. Just one. Five, Airman of the year. Five awards? Six awards. Six <laughs> awards in the last Number two months. NCE. <laughs> Dan wants to know, did you lose all your gains in BMT? No. Yes, you will. You'll lose, you'll lose pounds with muscle. I just uh, the guy, run a lot. Okay, so really the good. guy that I slept yes, next to in BMT, he came in at 195, extremely lean. Um, he left BMT. 178, very fat. That the food, it depends. If you're going, it, yeah, the food is great. It's great. But um, if you run a lot, yeah, dude. Well, not if you're going oh, yeah. to run a lot. Do the ice cream desserts like nonstop? The way you go like unlimited times to go. Eat. This dude went to a different BMP. If you, yeah, if you know, <laughs> all right. So if you know all I your, so right. <laughs> <laughs> on. If you know all your BMT up, questions, your yep. BMT things, and your um, study guide, then get dessert if you want. It's all up to you. Just know your stuff because you're gonna be quizzed on all the. On the, yeah. all, uh, the by all the MTIs <laughs> on all the study questions. Yeah. Do you have to learn to fly planes? <laughs> <laughs> Very small percentage of the Air Force flies. Um, and a lot smaller than you think. Every single time that somebody doesn't know anything about the Air Force, they just say, hey, so what plane do you fly? Yeah, everyone gets that. So, we got Simon's on your screw real quick. So, uh, so Hi, viewers. Um, they want to know, do they pay for our living expenses? Negative. Yes. The Air Force pays for it. Yeah. yeah. Oh, sorry. <laughs> <laughs> what are you talking? Don't. All right. He's already out of the video. <laughs> yes. Uh, if you're living on base in the dorms or just in base housing in general, they're taking your BAH away from you. So really, yes. <laughs> for you. 
Well, yeah. for quote unquote, yes. If you're living off base, they're giving you BAH uh, base allotted housing. Is that, is that what I mean? Base, base allowance housing. Allowance housing, all right. Um, and that's specific on what your rank is, or your grade. Go Air Force, because every other branch can't live off base. So. Yes. <laughs> yeah, that's also true. Marines have to live on base yeah. for, for a while. Yeah, so they're E5, they're married. Yeah. So then also we got, where is our tech school located? Uh, good. San Angelo, yeah. good fellow. Air Texas. Force base, yep. It's fun. ASU's right there, San Angelo University. Yep. They're not. Uh, lot to do if you're underage or of age. There's a strip club. <laughs> <laughs> there is a lot of There options. is. I don't okay. recommend it. Don't <laughs> go to Desiree. What's up, dude? What's going on, man? You're in public. This is Q&A. This is our boy yeah. Granberry. Yeah. Yeah. Oh. Hey, stop. That's the funniest thing I've ever seen. <laughs> <laughs> Hey, hey. How could it all make sense when I got me?